Hey, how's going? Welcome to LFC Transfer Talk. Now, some reports have come out in the world of local football club about a player in which, according to reports, we are rivaling to fight to actually sign in is um what the hell is his name? <laughs> what the fuck am I talking about? In Kamaladin Suleimana. Now, this player is a player that I'm quite positive many local football club fans, Reds all across the globe, I've never heard of before because he is currently 19 years old. He plays for North Line, by the way, over in the Danish League, in the Super League. And he's 19 years old, stands rough around 5'9", a bollocks all the intro, but if you can forgive me. He's 5'9", he's right-footed, plays multiple different positions, many plays on the left-hand side of the actual front three, but has the capabilities of playing on the right side of the front three and also down the middle in the number nine position. His valuation on transfer market is a is 2.7 million pounds and his contract length is up until 2024. Now, I heard of this kid about a week or so ago when reports had surfaced about Manchester United showing in a key interest in this extraordinary player, which is what he's been labelled. Having just seen his highlights just before I come on and stream, I would have to agree with the extraordinary statements because Manchester United is quite obvious. Last summer, they were going for Jadon Sancho. This summer, they're heavily linked again with Jadon Sancho. For me, in my personal opinion, this is not a solution to the Jadon Sancho uh, player that we are looking to. I want, and many local fans do as well, even though there is a division in the actual fan base because many would prefer a Haaland, a Mbappe, or even a Kane over a Jadon Sancho. For me, Jadon Sancho is a player that we bring to local football. But this kid, in Kamal Din Suleimana, is as equally as talented and is equally as good as Jaden Sancho. And when you look at Saint Alan Alan Saint Maximin of Newcastle, this kid is in that conversation without a shadow of a doubt. When we're talking about dribbling skills, when we're talking about being a raw talent, pace, shifting the ball, the ball sticking to the foot like glue, this dude without a shadow of a doubt, I can easily say with my hand on my heart that this dude has strong hips because the way he shifts the ball the way he shifts his body his his balance is not maybe the the best in the world but it's good enough when he's dribbling because he does get bundled over or he falls over similar to like Sergio Mane and I believe with all the players we have been linked with from a Jeremy Doku to Ishmael Assar to to many others in world football as the long term the gangster side Jumane. For me, I was even looking at Saiku Koyta of Arby Salzburg and I and although be he fell a drug test, which as much as I tried to defend the guy of where, you know, the story that he had given, it was medicine that he'd taken, that he had no, it was prescribed to him by a doctor. Many are not gonna buy that. Oh, he fell a drug test, we don't want to cheat at the club. This dude in Solomane, in my opinion, is even better than Seiko Koita. That's how highly I rate this individual. His end product is something that he will have to develop. But when we're talking about all the other attributes, like for example, when you look at someone like a, a, you know, a Curtis Jones, passenger number 17, different type of players. But when you look at those two individuals and you compare them, he's more, far more advanced. And you may not rate the... Uh, by the way, his is his birthday. Oh, his birthday is February fifteenth as well. Interesting. By the way, he joined he joined them on his birthday. That's cool as well. But anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry, but <laughs> this is all just like due to me now. But point of the matter is that there's different levels, but Sulemana is way advanced when we talk about dribbling skills, when we talk about close ball control, having the ability to and he's so skillful. That's why he's very similar to Jaden Sancho. So if Money Knight miss out on Jaden Sancho because we sign him. They will go for this dude because according to reports, which I read some of them out right now, Ajax tapered a twelve million pound bid and Man United toppled that with a fifteen million pound bid. Hence, why you see fifteen million pounds in the actual thumbnail. So, in my personal opinion, I would love Liverpool Football Club to sign this dude, but I would love us to sign Jadon Sancho. I would love to smash and grab both of them because he will not be a player that will turn our local football club, especially if. And they, I mean this no, with no disrespect. Everyone knows I love the gangster inside Germany. That's why I gave him the nickname, the gangster, because he's got that murder face, <laughs> which I saw way back in, I think it was 16, 17 season, he, or maybe 15, 16. We were in Europa League in 15, 16. The murder face I saw in a team photo before an actual game. And when I saw the murder face, he became the gangster immediately. So point is that if he knocks on Klopp's front door this summer and wants to leave the football club, then I'd be looking at this dude to play on the left-hand side of the front three. And he would be exceptional. He would be exceptional. He would be a talent that you would see 
grow tremendously from season to season to season. He's not a prolific goal scorer, based on what I actually see on transfer market. In all competitions, he has played 29 times with 10 goals and 8 assists. In uh, the Super League, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, he's played 20 times with 4 goals and 6 assists. In the Super League and Championship round, he played. He has played eight times with six goals and two assists. And in the side bank, uh, Pokalan, he has played one time with no goals and no assists. So he's a he's a talent which you can't really consider to be raw only from the end product perspective, which is a game which is part of his game, which based on what I have seen is rapidly improving. And he would be a player that I think that club would get quite excited about that if he had this talent on on his on, on, under his wing uh you know at liverpool football club especially if gangster leaves but if gangster doesn't leave and he comes to liverpool football club i'll be buying him and we loan him out then it'd be good to look at and observe from a distance and then when the, the gangster leaves eventually which he will or he will just retire with liverpool football club i don't know what his desire is but if he leaves hypothetically then he would be the perfect replacement we can look at Harvey Barnes, we can look at Alan St. Maximin, we can look at many targets, Rafinha, even one. We can look at other left wingers in world football. Uh, Seiko Koita is another one. I was high, high on Seiko Koita. But when I seen this dude, I'm just like, levels, man. That's what it's about, levels. And this dude is levels above Seiko Koita, dribbling skills. The difference between Seiko Koita as of right now, although they play maybe in similar leagues, is Seiko Koita is more of a goal scorer than then Suleimana. That's the difference. But the difference when we're talking about everything outside of the end product, Suleimana's way more skillful. Way, 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 way more skillful. Like, he's very similar to Jadon Sancho. And that, I don't want it to be... Well, Man United will go for Jadon Sancho. They'll pay the 80 to 90 million pounds for Jadon Sancho. They'll, they'll splash the cash. And although they're trying so desperately to maybe try to land this guy, but if they put a lot more um, focus on the Jadon Sancho deal, that it will open up the pathway for us to land the signature of Suleiman. Ajax are still there. I'm sure there'll be other whole host of football clubs after this individual as well. So in my personal opinion, I hope the Liverpool Football Club muscle, I hope because of who we are, where we're going, I hope the plan, I hope the strategy, I hope our owners back club, not only with Sancho, but also with the way we structure our deals in the sense of not only payment plan with a Bush Dortmund, also with the Palais Plus money, that hopefully will work. If Ox goes there for 30 million, which is what we would value him at, maybe they'll try and knock that down so then they, they can increase the amount that we would actually pay for a Jaden Sancho. However, it would all work. I would love both of these two individuals at local football club without a shadow of a doubt. And this would be, in a way, many would call it rebuilding our front line because you would have Suleiman on the left hand side, you would have Jaden Sancho on the right side. Let's hypothetically assume that the gangster gets sold. If the gangster is one which many have stated and I've always been dead against it because the one that I would get rid of because of the financial side of it would be Salah. If if he wanted to leave and Paris Saint-Germain offered the hundred million pounds plus, then I would sell Salah. I wouldn't sell Salah any other way. I would if if he didn't want to go I wouldn't sell Salah. I would keep hold of him. But when it comes to double or nine, there was that opportunity with Atletico Madrid because when we were linked with Suarez in that LFC transfer talk, I did claim that I could see Atletico Madrid coming in for Firmino. Next day, reports came out. You can go back through the timeline. Many of the viewers who know the timeline, were watching live, know what the hell happened. So my point is that when you look at our front three and with the way Bobby Firmino has played in the last couple of games, and with my thinking that possibly, potentially, our owners are not going to want to sell because then they would have to replace and they have to replace him with they'd have to find someone in world football that is good enough, you know, to play down the actual middle, which you can, which it would be passing Daka 70 million pounds and it would be a great replacement. But would they want to take that actual risk because he's doing it over in the Austrian League, which is many fans a sort of excuse, if you will. But it's a dead league and it's not it's a championship league. It's not even on the level of the Premier League. And we want more of an established player who's doing that at a better league and yada yada list goes on kind of thing, which kind of falls into the bracket, in my personal opinion, of whoever's hot in media, they just won. Like Isa Mandy, Sven Botman, the list goes on kind of thing. So I believe that if, for example, out of any one of our front three, Egyptian King, 009 Gangster, the gangster wants to leave. If he wants to leave, as much as I don't want him to. He would have my blessing and I'd be like, cool. But I would go get this brother right here, Kamal, uh, Kamal Dean Soleimana. I would go get him as the gangster replacement. 
but Sancho will still be coming to Liverpool Football Club. I will not say if any one of our transfer fucking committee, our owners, Klopp, anyone, I don't give a shit, Mike Gordon, Michael Edwards, A.K. Oliver Twist, the supposing sporting director of Liverpool Football Club, also known as a bootleg salesman, they make an excuse that we can't sign Sancho because we're going to get Sulemana. I'll be furious because Sancho has to come to Liverpool Football Club because for me, what you do is Salah moves from the right side to the middle, right, number nine position. This is the restructuring, readjustment, right? Salah goes down the middle and you put Salah uh, Suleiman on the left-hand side. If Sergio Mane leaves, if he leaves, like, I have to make that perfectly clear, right side Sancho because he will replace Salah. Salah goes down the middle, replace 009. 009 goes into the left midfield position of a three. But Phil continues to play, and he readjusts his actual game because he doesn't have those attributes anymore that he showed three years ago, where he used to be the leader of the front three with the high press. He used to start you off high energy, go, go, go. Whether it's burnout, whether it's the games that he's you know, played over the last three, four years, he's just been consistently playing. Whether it's uh, father time, whether it's the decline of multiple of the reasons why, maybe it's the style. I don't know the answer to all of these type of questions, but I can give you all the, the sort of uh, points and then you can make your own mind up as to, okay, it's that or it's that. But this dude, without a shadow of a doubt, without a shadow of a doubt, you get Sancho, you get Sulemana, you have complete balance. If you keep Sergio Mane, you may still have the balance, but Sergio Mane is not as skillful as Sulemana without a shadow of a doubt. I've seen Sergio Mane ever since he played for Southampton and Sergio Mane was raw, he calmed down, he grew, he matured, he gets goals, he scores goals, but he can be which what a lot of people accuse him of, which is be rash. This dude, he could be rash. I do need to see a lot more of him. And what my preference is always to watch a full game so I get a better judgment of someone's total totality of that actual game. But based on the highlights that I've actually seen, he's on the same... He's in the bracket. Not on the same level. I think he would be maybe on the same level if he was playing for like a Bayern, if you will. And then they'd be like, oh my God, he's on the same level as Sancho. So I don't know whether I can put him into that category without watching him in a full game and watching him multiple times to get a better assessment of him. But as of right now, based on what I see, I can say he's in the conversation of a Jadon Sancho skill-wise. They're on the same type of level. Numbers-wise, not because he's only been playing for a, a Norgeland how long has he been playing for him? He's only been playing for him. This is like the first season in, and he was, uh, he left in a free in 2020, February, right? Last year, <laughs> from right to dream uh, over in the Ghanaian League. So I, I truly believe that he could be a very, very good asset for local football club. He definitely, definitely could. And whether we were able to land his actual signature of, um, you know, Man United or anyone else like Ajax or Su uh, are after him remains to be seen. But we are supposedly in the conversation. Remember to click on the like button below. Subscribe to the channel if uh, you are new. Let me look at your comments before I read the actual reports, uh, people. Football says I can't comment since I don't know who he is. Wow. <laughs> For once, you don't know who a player is. That's interesting. Check it out. Breaking news, Liverpool have created a supporters board, which will be part of the decision-making of the main board. That is news to me, by the way, as well. I will look at um, Spirit Shankly on Twitter, social media after the show, and we'll go through it. Maybe it might be on the Liverpool Football Club official website, by the way. Let's have a look. Because I know there's the whole... Excuse me. Oh, there is as well. LFC to create a supporters board to give fans representation on major fan-facing strategic decisions. Liverpool is set to launch a new supporters board so they can, can maintain this is FSG's is this is FSG's sneaky way of working around the fifty-one percent rule, the impending fifty-one percent rule, because all fans across the country are calling for the government to bring in the German rule of the 51% rule. So they've worked on this. The Spirit Shankly went to them and, you know, presented their four points and they wanted to see at the table. So this is their way of, without reducing their equity, to be able to maintain the profits and maintain the value that they want to so badly receive once they sell the football club. Eventually, the long ball game that I've banged on about over the last five years or four years or whatever. So this is the way around it. This is... This is the strategy by FSG. The thing I fucking sm uh, like dumb, but yeah, this is their way of countering it. So it's up to Spray Shankly and the fans to either agree upon it or to disagree upon it. So anyway, I'll read the report. Liverpool FC is uh, set to launch a new supporters board in an initiative 
which will deliver again. You know, it's like with the ESL. Oh, this is new. We're, we're, this is for the benefit of sport, which it wasn't. It was for your pockets because everyone hit it and is greedy. So now if you look at it, has any other football club that's come out suggested this? Has anyone else come out suggested this kind of thing? Let's like support us, board. No. So Liverpool Football Club trying to be the leaders again, proactive. But again, it's a way of, in my opinion, shunning the fans. It's a, it's a way of shunning the fans. Whether they have a voice or not, it's irrelevant right now. It's shunning the fans because of the 51% rule. I don't understand the 51% rule total, uh, totally. I would have to go do more research on it, how the system works, the positives, the negatives, the pros and the cons. But with this one, it looks like as if it's a, it's a way that FSG have tried to bypass the whole 51% rule because fans don't want to just be... A seat, having a seat at the table, they want to actually be a part of the club, right? With the 51% rule, that's what happens with club body state a few weeks ago when it comes to the transfers and this and that kind of stuff, it goes down. But there's always positives or negatives to every single thing. So the positives may be fans may have a seat at the table, but what's the negative? I will always ask the negative. So anyway, an initiative, initiative which will deliver meaning, uh, meaningful fan representation aboard uh, at main board and executive levels as part of the club's uh, commitment to put supporters at the heart of the decision-making process. The development follows a, a series of recent meetings with the official uh, local supporters, Trust Spirit Shankly, and we'll see the creation of a new uh, engagement model that enables a deeper consultation with supporters on fan-facing strategic decisions. Crucially, this consultation process will be enshrined in the club's articles of Association and legal binding a memorandum, memorandum of understanding between the club and the official supporters uh, trust will be entered into, thereby assuming ensuring, excuse me, supporters import of fan issues via structured dialogue. Of fan issues. <laughs> The supporters board will be launched ahead of the new season and will be made up of a group of supporters that represent the, the, the club diverse fan base. The official Liverpool supporters trust will be responsible for running the supporters board and will be liaising with its affiliate groups and the wider supporter base in order to ensure such a representation is achieved. The supporters board will hold regular meetings with the club and the chair will be invited to attend LFC's main board meetings when fan facing strategic matters matters arise the existing fund forum structure will remain in place and will be reshaped into the three-man working groups to cover ticketing match day expense and the ed and i this will ensure operational issues and project continuing to be discussed by club officials and supporters when appropriate these uh, matters will also be represented by the uh, supporters a board level discussions between the club and the official supporters a uh, trust will continue over the coming weeks uh, to finalize and formalize the new engagement structure with the public declaration the supporters trust will uh, also be meeting its members to vote on the new structure billy hogan chief executive who's a scumbag by the way of local fc said firstly i'd like to thank all those supporters uh, we've either met in in person from the supporters trust or received uh, feedback over the past few weeks this import has been invaluable has helped us reach a point in which at which we have been able to agree the principles that will lead to the creation of a new supporters board. The focus over the last few weeks of dialogue has uh, been to find a long-term solution that is in the best interest of local FC. It's a support uh, and it's supportive, excuse me, one uh, that we finally believe is not only meaningful but also hold it in keeping with the values and aspirations of the club. While these changes are significant, it's important to stress that the current fund forum have also worked incredibly well since uh, they have introduced four years ago. They were introduced four years ago, excuse me, and it is crucial they continue to, in addition to the supporters board, in order to give us a range of engagement options. There is still a lot to discuss with representatives of the supporters trust in the weeks ahead, but having these principles in place is a great step towards uh, forward and we look forward to formalizing the details and the structure over the summer we will uh, share the details with all the sports ahead of the new season uh, Joe Blot chair of uh, Spirit Ashankly the local supporters just said Spirit Ashankly met with the representatives of LFC's board on Tuesday May 18 2021 to continue to talk on the union for request after discussions over the past weeks we believe this is a unique deal unique deal whoa 
Whoa, <laughs> whoa. And recommend its acceptance. We see this as a chance to help shape the future of our club and put. I feel like as if, as soon as I read that word unique deal, it seems like as if someone's trying to rob me. Like, I'm sorry, but it seems like as if someone's trying to rob me. Hmm. Future and our club to put the, at the forefront of changing football in general. We arranged on an online meeting uh, for members, hopefully at the start of next week, where we will discuss, uh, we will be discussed and, and then put to the vote. So, like I said, this is FSG's way of working around the system of what was being implemented. So if local football club fans agree to this, then that whole 51% rule, it'll be a domino effect where if our fans agree to this, it's like a chain reaction. Then Man United fans, Man United owners will be like, well, Liverpool have done that. We'll do something similar. We don't agree to the 51% rule, which eventually over the course of time will be, it's like this is their way of abolishing that 51% rule, which means the equity will be lower, which means the profits will be lower, that they will be able to gain. You know, even though maybe many will say that they haven't taken any money out of the football club, but then when it comes to the sell on value, right, they wouldn't be getting the 5 billion, the 6 billion, they would be getting half of that because 51%, right, somewhere around half of it would be owned by the fans. So, it's uh, BS as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, it's BS. Fun representation is a, a little boo -boo. I'm not excited about it because I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to pull wool over a lot of people's eyes. Um, uh, Maximad says uh, the best player. He is good. I will get back to this because I'm not interested in that. That is just it, that's their way of selling wolf tickets. If you know what wolf tickets are. Go check out Nick Diaz. Uh, another thing is, this is a way for them to to scam fans because they know that the 51% rule is something that they don't want. This is the way of sort of making you believe that you're getting the better end of the stick, which you're clearly not. You're clearly not. We are not. Because again, I don't know the 51% rule. I have to look into it. I have to do a lot more research, extensive research on that. And then when you look at what they're proposing, it looks like as if it is... It's like as if they've gone to a shop and you have bought something and the and the cashier gives you back. So you give them 20 quid, they give you, and you buy something for like four quid and they give you 16 pound back in change. But you, and you take that, but you give back them back 15 quid or whatever. And you're like, actually give me back that 20 pound. And then you give them, let's say three quid back or you no, know, you give them like, you know, some of the money back and they've ripped you off instead of actually getting 16 pounds, they've actually got 24 quid off of you. Like, that's what it seems like to me. They're working some hustle on us. They're hustling fans right now. And I feel like as if they've, they're, 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 they're kind of, they're taking advantage over fans. But like I said, this is a chain reaction. I'm not all about this one little bit. I don't care what anyone says. I'm not about this because I know for a fact, I'm quite convinced that they are trying to, they're trying to avoid that fifty-one percent rule, and this is the way of it. So it's like you got to ask yourself the question: Why are they so quick to try and force this through? Then the fifty-one percent rule. Ask yourself the question that, because they present you very shankly the four points which I read in LFC news before. I read you the new the four points and the statements and everything, the, the transcript, the meetings and everything, and then they went away. They formulated something. They come back with this. You get a seat at the board, you don't get any money from us, which is the main thing. You're not getting any money from us. You're not getting any equity. That's what the 51% rule is. You get equity. So it's always, again, about greed. What did they always say? Uh, follow the money. So I'm not about this shit. <laughs> us Liverpool fans have just won the war. Uh, won a, a battle, let's win the war. Actually, you're wrong on this. <laughs> you're falling for it. You have to look at the bigger picture, not just... Be a letter, but uh, never mind it. This is this with this. If we agree to this, we will get them out. The way we will get them out is a fifty-one percent rule because they will have less equity, which means that their their potential earnings will be less. Okay, the football club will have put less potential, the potential transfer funds and so forth. And however the whole 51% rule works out, I don't, again, I don't know the answer to it because I haven't really looked in, truly, truly looked into it. But my point is that this is their way of trying to compromise to try and say, yeah, yeah, you, you know, like trying to convince that you they've got a, that fans have got a good deal by having a seat at the table, but it, they really hold the power. They really will hold the power still because it's about money. That's what it is. They don't want to give you anything. 
They just want to say that you have a seat at the table when your voice will be nothing. They want it, you. They want it again because what you got to understand is, like I told you, Billy Hogan replacing Peter Moore in the summer 2020 transfer window as the CEO of Liverpool Football Club was like August or maybe it was like July or June when the announcement was made that it's Peter Moore was leaving and would be replaced by, you know, uh, Billy Hogan putting their their guy FSG guy their pawn their their whatever you want to call him in place and they they did the same with LeBron James two percent. Stake a local football club to one percent in FSG. First, you know, black guy or whatever in the boardroom. Why? Because it's an image. This thing is all a facade. It's a, it's bullshit. It's just an image thing. They're trying to be the leaders again, like they were with ESL, but this time it's proactive because they're trying to do something good, the great good for football fans. But realistically, they don't want to give you anything. They want to give you a voice at the table. That's all it is. But realistically, how much of that voice is actually going to be merited? Because what they're trying to do is they're trying to give you the image and the perception that they've given you a voice, they've given you something, but they really haven't given you anything because they still hold the power. Do people are people thick here? Like I'm not falling for this shit. I'm not falling for it. They can fuck off. They, you take fifty one percent off of them, they will not want to be. There will be no reason for them. You think about it logically. You want a you want a company, and you are making hundred quid every minute of the day or maybe let's say at the end of the day you get a hundred quid but now let's say that wherever you make that hundred pound i take 51 uh, 51 quid off of you every single day are you going to want to be in that job are you going to want to go elsewhere where you get that hundred quid that you've earned you're going to want to go elsewhere aren't you because you're not going to want to be there and that's what it's ultimately about it's about the equity it's about the percentage they don't want to give anything because this is their workaround this is their way of colluding people to believe that they have a seat at the table that they will have a voice it's not about the voice it's about principles and for me getting them out of the football club is the first step and if 51 percent rule comes into play maybe that might need to be worked and restructured for the benefit of the Premier League by the government and concise with fans and also football clubs and whatever that you want to call it. But I don't believe that this is good. I believe that this is the shit, their shady way of a workaround around the system for their own benefit because their perception and the images to give off to fans that we're doing something for you that because their reputation is in tatters and that's what it is. I'm not stupid. I'm not fucking daft. I, I, I like I said, when I read the, the, the transcript and the report and it was the unique word which was said by... Uh, you know, the guy from Spirit of Shankly, right? When he said those words, for me, that was like, yeah, that's what they have said to you, so you've repeated it. Now, I'm not calling that guy thick because I know he's some old dude, but to me, <laughs> this is not a unique opportunity. This is their way of literally tying your hands behind your backs, patting you in the back and saying, you got a good deal, buddy, get the fuck out of here. When it really isn't, they're just like, literally, they've literally just scammed you. That's what they've done. If Liverpool fans accept this, they've just scammed all Liverpool fans. That's what they've done because they have literally, they have literally sold you a soppy story and got, uh, you have, they've sold you a soppy story and they have sold it for free where there should be, there should be some consequences, severe consequences. And there was nowhere in that actual statement that they had agreed upon any one of the four points. The main one was the, they wanted the 51% rule to come in. So their way of working around that was, We'll give you a voice and a seat at the actual table and they support us trust kind of thing. That's what they've done, man. Like people think right now, come on, use your brain, man. That's all they're doing. They're trying to they're trying to hijack this whole situation and trying to give the perception of the the good owners and stuff like that. Are, and they're trying to get ahead of it. I'm not daft. I'm not fucking daft. This is why Liverpool football club owners hate my guts. This is why I'm quite convinced they don't want me anywhere near the players or Liverpool Football Club. And Spirit Shankly, if you got any common sense. You need to have a word with me because I don't fall for this kind of stupidity. I don't fall for it because if you are a fan and someone says something to you in terms of, I don't know, like something that you're not well adverse with, I mean, anyone at the Spray Shankly could be, there could be one of them, could be a lawyer, the, the old dude who's the head of it, you know, could be a lawyer. I don't know what his background is, but my point is that if you don't have a thought that comes into your brain of what are they trying to do, right? You know, if you don't try to understand their angle, you will never understand their intention. And their intention is to bypass everything with the good boy image of we're trying to connect with the fans because they've got to build the reputation up. And this is their best thing. This is their best solution. 
The why is their best solution? Because they want to avoid the 51% rule. It's staring you right in the face. It's bullshit this. I'm not for this whatsoever. I don't give a fuck whether it's a seat at the table. Spirit Shine Clean should reject this. They should reject it straight away. And they should proceed with asking for more. Because if you logically think about it, if you are going to a... I don't know, you're going to a car boot a salesman, right? Michael Edwards is the salesman. You're going to go buy a car, right? You're going to a car show or whatever the hell it is. And the car is, let's say, £11,000. And you've obviously got to do... The, and it comes with MOT and whatever the hell, right? I'm not a fucking car fan, but let's say it's £11,000. Are you telling me you're going to go to the to the car thing, me jig or whatever, the garage, and you're going to be like, here you go, eleven grand, bam, done. No, you're going to fucking try and knock the dude down. Right? So why are you not negotiating for? This would drive me nuts if it's pretty exactly would be like, sure, man, let's go for it. Because you've offered us a seat at the table or a device, they wouldn't be stupid. You come with four points, they completely disregard the one point, which is the 51% rule. They disregard it, come up with a better sol a solution to them, which is better. And it's a workaround. And you're like, sure, yeah, man, just because you want to have meetings and that, that. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Who are you fooling right now? Come on, people. From man, this is bullshit. Have a walk along, uh, by the way, as well. Let me quickly uh, let me just get back on, let me get onto Twitter real quickly. Uh, let me get uh, funds to buy him for. Let me just tweet um Spirit Shankly. This is what I'm tweeting out, by the way, people. <laughs> Let me just read it. I'm sorry that I just went a bit silent for a moment, but this I'm tweeting this right now to spread it shaky. I'm going to read it out. After what I just read, what the hell is that illegal? 
So I'm tweeting to Spurs Shankly, the new proposal by LFC support, the in bracket supporters board should be rejected immediately. The new proposal is an evil way. I just to click the spelling. Evil way of, of them avoiding the 51% rule. Number one, uh, 51% rule. And also, another way. Not uh, uh, of scamming fans, scamming fans with a measly seat at the table without giving up any equity. Some will call that a work around the system. Are you really going to trust our greedy owners who created the ESL? Like, they think they're so smart, but yeah, uh, I've tweeted that out right now. Let me read some of the rest of your comments, by the way. But that ESL is bullshit, it's BS. I don't know, if anyone falls for that crap, man, then you're really daft and gullible. Now, Phillips is a new, is a... <laughs> well done, Spray Shankly. Groundbreaking outcome. <laughs> you guys are thick. <sighs> right, I've just sent fired off a couple of tweets. <laughs> I'm not even interested. This was like 40 minutes ago. Like, the agreement reads, Oh my god, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, then, then you really, then you really, then they really played you. Damn. Yep, uh, Spirit Shankly just got fucked over. <laughs> Pretty much, they've just come out with a statement on the Twitter that they've agreed to this. Like, nah, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm dead against this. I, I'm dead against this also boss bullshit trust. Like, fuck it. They just got screwed over. Liverpool fans are fucked now with FSG. They've got 100% equity. We ain't going to get these scumbags out. They just worked the system to try and make people believe that they're working with fans because their reputation is damaged, but they don't want it to go down the 51% rule. Other fan bases like Man United, Arsenal, Chelsea, Tottenham, you, the list goes on. I've been trying to get their owners out. These owners have got ahead of it. FSG got ahead of the fucking crowd and like, oh, these are the points we'll come up with a solution that they'll try this. Do, are you, do you really think that these guys thought that this is the only solution? No, they were like, we'll, we'll, you know, like when you... Like Liverpool Football Club, when we go to football clubs like, uh, let's say we go to Leicester City with Yuri Termans or even Suleiman with when it comes to uh, a Northland, right? You're going to lowball off of them. This was the lowball bullshit. They could have done more. And Spray Shankly, like, yeah, we accept, we agree. Like, fucking dumbasses. This is why I knew, I knew that these guys could not be trusted. I knew they could not be trusted because this was something that I feared. I said it, I said it months ago that. 
I fear that these guys, all they're so desperate to do is to be to have a seat at the table so that they want to look all jolly and we're a part of Liverpool Football Club and they could have got so much more. They could have got these cons out of the football club, number one. Number two, they could have got the 51% rule implemented in Premier League, whether it was for the greater of good, whether it was for positive or negative, because there's always going to be pros and cons with that. But the reality of the matter is they have literally just been worked by the system. That's all that's happened. FSG have literally got away with bloody murder. This is a highway robbery at the highest level. They just got away with it because they fucked up with the ESL. They know they fucked up because their reputation has been damaged. You got a huge backlash, etc. This goes on kind of thing. And all of a sudden that you go to these guys and you present something and they're willing to listen in this like, you know, kiss ass, the corporate way or whatever. They went away. They formulated an idea. They came back. They gave you a little bit which is you can have a seat at the table but that's all you're fucking getting that's all they did that's all they did and everyone has fallen for it even football like oh this is great day no it's not this is the sh this is sh this is a, a shit show this is a shit show they just fucking pull one over your eyes people get out of here man i'm not buying this shit this is bullshit if i was in that meeting you really think i would have stood for this shit spirit shankly have literally got their pants pulled down and they've just been shafted up the backside that is what has just happened by our sports trust because they don't have bollocks they don't have cojones they did not stand their ground the first thing that fsg gave them they took they sucked their dick straight away because they were like here you go we're gonna give you a seat at the table but they didn't give anything else. There was no guarantees. Look at the four points. One of them, which I remember from the top of my head, forget you the three, right? But they are quite important. The f one point was having a seat at the table, the 51% rule being implemented. And as soon as they were like, the 51% rule, which they didn't even acknowledge, they ignored that shit and were like, you can have a seat at the table. But obviously that voice at the, with the seat at the, at the table, how big of a voice is that? How much of an influence is that going to have? Not a lot, people. Not a lot, because they will, over the course of time, that voice will slowly be minorited because they're not going to have the power in the boardroom to be able to, to pull the way, like with the 51% rule. It's not going to happen. You could just you just fucked it over Liverpool fans. We are fucked now with these dickheads as our owners. I'm not for this whatsoever. I just believe wholeheartedly FSG just worked the system. They work the system. Now football fans all across the globe. Man United fans, Tottenham fans, Chelsea fans, Arsenal fans, whoever the hell you are that's begging, you know, with this or ESL on the back of it to try to get your owners out. Thank Liverpool Football Club supporters trust, Spirit of Shankly, for just shafting you right now. Thank them for just shafting you to accepting this because this is what FSG have done. Now Man United are going to look at it and be like, they've accepted it. We'll implement the same thing to get a seat, to bring a seat at the table for the fans, so to speak. They're going to just copy the same thing. That's all that's happened. You just fucked everyone over. Stupidity at the highest type of level. And now Phillips is a new Sammy Hoopia. More goals to come from him. Uh, I respect your opinion, but I don't agree with that. TJ says having fans on the board is great. However, keep in mind that Daglish is on the board and the board has not consulted about Super League and the honours. Listen, it's, 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 just, it's just stupid, man. Fans' reputation is is here. Check the Liverpool official website. I've checked it, but like I'm not falling for that shit. That's the, like football. I think you've just been... You have literally just been... You have literally just been violated. That's what this is. This is violation. This is FSG getting away with bloody murder all over again. It's all over again. I've been FSG out, out since 2010. Many of you know this. And I know FSG's moves. If FSG turn around and went away and they digested more, you know, they went away and they had many, many meetings over course of time. Like, it could have been a six-month process. The 51% rule could have been by the government with fans. If, if Put it this way, if I was a part of Spirit Shankly, my intention would have been having dialogue and communication with Liverpool Football Club over course of time, call it stalling, and the 51% rule would be something that I'd be working because I would rather, as a Liverpool Football Club fan, have this option and this option, then I would pick the best for a Liverpool Football Club. Not, I've got this option and I've got no other option. It makes no logical sense to me. It's stupidity at the highest type of level, which proves that Spirit Shankly have no sense, common sense whatsoever. No common sense because the first offer they got, they took. It's like, how, how does that make sense for the football club? Makes no sense for fans. It's stupidity, man. It's the daftest shit I've ever seen in my entire life. It's so stupid. I'm so dead against it. But I expected this bullshit by FSG. Think about it. DSL was only like a month or so ago when that shit dropped. 
And within that time frame, with you know, a couple of weeks ago when you know the Spirit Shankly had that meeting with Billy Hawken, like a couple of weeks, it took them literally that quickly to just formulate something, and now they're agreeing upon it, like. I, are you not going to use your brain and take take a step back and be like, hold on a second, let me analyze this, let me, you know, look over this, think about this, get legal advice, do whatever we got to do, look at the best options. They're just like, ah, nah, nah, let's, like, what are you doing, my Lord of mercy? This is the dumbest shit I've ever seen in my entire life. It is the dumbest shit. I'm sorry, but it's so stupid. It's literally so stupid. Absolutely, Chof, that we won yesterday. I agree with that. I was as well. Jemmy Doku, uh, he's a Belgian uh, left winger, used to play for Anderlecht, and I don't, believe, I don't know where he plays right now. Thoughts about fan representation on the board? I'm just giving you right now. I never thought, I uh, think I've seen who said that he's better than you, but he is. Dribbling-wise, he's ridiculous since we just got fan on the... Like, I'm not going to, I'm going to stop reading that. <laughs> I'm going to stop reading that because I'm, I'm getting really pissed off right now. Because it's just stupid. They've just pulled world over a lot of people's eyes. Right now, that's what they've done. That's all they've done. They've just literally pulled world over fans' eyes. And all of y'all are like, happy. We got fan reputation, uh, uh, you know, representation in the board. All we've got is a seat at the table. We don't have any power. We don't have no power whatsoever. You have a seat at the table and you're happy about that? That's all we have. That's like you being in at work and... Your manager says, yeah, we're going to go have a meeting. You can come in, but you're going to write the fucking transcript. You're going to write down. You're going to be mediated in the actual meeting. But you, you don't have no power. You have no say. You got nothing. You got nothing. They're going to act like as if they have a voice. But over the course of time, I know this. I know what FSG are like. Over the course of time, that voice will become very, very small. They don't give a shit, man. Would you rather sign a striker or a winger? Both. How Salmane then Salah? When a striker can play a wide, um, man and a Daka, so can Mbappe, true. And Ivan Tony, 32 goals this season. I haven't seen him play, I can't comment on it to be honest with you. I have never seen him play before. Would you sign Lee and Gretzka? Well, I wanted him way back in the day, but we didn't get him so. Yeah, 1.71, 1.77, excuse me. Yep. Just put wool over people's eyes, man. <laughs> Just put wool over people's eyes. I've read all the stuff. I don't even need to read this, but I've read all the stuff on that guy. The guy's a scumbag. I just can't believe it. I've never been on that. It's true. I've never been on the Bappe train. Adam's joined the show. Welcome to the show, Adam. ASM to Liverpool, LOL. This dude, this Solomon's on the same level. Solomon is on the same level. I still haven't even read the reports. I apologize. Just like, that just threw me off, man. That really threw me off. Threw me off. FHR businessman buying Mbappe with the one year left would be cheap. Uh, it won't be that cheap because what you're thinking of is the fee. The fee will still be close to 100 million, whether it's 70, whether it's 80, whether it's 90, whether it's 100. is relevant, but in the totality of the whole deal, it would be irrelevant because he would want four or 500 grand a week. We don't have that kind of money. ASM is good, but I prefer, I prefer, see, the thing is, my thinking is if now that we get back to football, um, Sancho's given. Sancho has to happen right side of the front three for Salah to go down the middle and then for Firmino to drop into a midfield position. But if Sergio Mane goes, which I don't want him to, but if he decides that he wants to move on and go to Real Madrid or whatever and stuff like that, then we go for Solomana. That's all I'm saying. Solomana would be the Sergio Mane replacement if he decides to go. And Sergio Mane, we can sell for £80 million, maybe 90 We can get around that amount. Then that would pay for the Sancho one, but... I don't want Sergio Ma the Sancho to be seen as the man Sergio Mane replacement. What I want him to be seen as is a right winger that's coming in not to replace anyone. And Solomana would be seen as the Sergio Mane replacement. So that's what I see. 
Mbappe is just flying with Liverpool Football Club like a, he's just a chick that we know we can't get. <laughs> so he is like he's a prime dime nine that we know we can't get. That's all he is. He's just flying with us, just using us, man. He's like that chick in the club that's always like looking at you and you're thinking, oh, dude, I got, I got, I got, I can get this shit, right? You know what I mean? Like, you know, she's checking me out, she's flirting with me, but really she's looking at your boy behind you. Like, who's six foot six? <laughs> that's what she's looking at, and she's flying with him, but you think it's you. That's all she's. That's all that's happening. She, he's flying with Liverpool Football Club, but really he's looking at Real Madrid. That's what's going on. So forget that crap. I'm not interested in Mbappe. It's not far fetched as we think, but let's see. I, I, I don't like. If you're talking about the whole, um, the whole supporters trust, I'm dead against it. I am, I am. Let me tweet again. I need to tweet just to make things perfectly clear. I am. Um, Message. Have some perspective, like FSG are never gonna sell the club. Far too valuable, at least having fan representation prevents any disaster. <laughs> Future disaster could have made the club image better in general. And who should they sell to? Says another one. Well, ruler of Dubai. Some dude just basically messaged me when I just said what I said, right? And who would they sell to? And I'm like, the ruler of Dubai, because he made a three billion pound bid. According to me, before the ESL, like, use your brain, man. Literally use your brain. All right, I'm, that's it. I'm done with the whole tweeting. It might be a bit of a 20 minute extra long show, by the way, people, or 30 minutes. Just look at the same. Uh... Are you back now that Chelsea look like they can make top four? You disappeared for a while there, mate. No, mate, I won. No, mate, I on. I'm. I on. On want to troll. Here to chat. Okay, is that illegal? Your presence. <laughs> I don't know what that's been, man. Remember to click on the like button below. Subscribe to the channel if you are new, people. Alonso Poster is a young goalie doing well. I don't know how good he's doing. Why are you so pissed? Why am I so pissed? Are you fucking kidding me right now? FSG are taking the piss. Do you guys understand what I've just said? So Liverpool Football Club fans have, the Superior Shankly Supporters Trust have made four points in the meeting with Billy Hogan. What they are, I don't know from the top of my head, right? But they made four points. One was the having a seat at the table, 51% rule, so forth. That's all that has been talked about, 51% rule, fans having a seat at the table, where the club, with his knowledge, being a manager over from Germany, being a German, with the way that system works, 
based on his knowledge, whether it's right or wrong, I don't know the answer to that. I'm not going to just take his word for it. I'm going to do my own extensive research and then wait up with what he has stated and be like, okay, you're right or you're wrong. I'm not going to just take his word for it. I'm going to go do my own research. That's what I'm going to do, which I haven't done because I need to do it and I just keep getting caught up doing other stuff. So the point of the matter is that this is a way of FSG trying to work around that system to avoid the 51% rule because they don't want to give up any equity. That is the point. Whether it's right or wrong, Right in terms of fans being having a voice at the table with equity or not, whether you agree with that or not, whether you agree that FSG will sell or not is irrelevant. It's irrelevant. But it's the if FSG tried to pull wool over fans' eyes with the whole ESL, trying to be greedy and everything, but all of a sudden a few weeks later on when things have died down, when fans are being vocal with Spirit Shankly having a seat at the table, fifty one percent rule, this and that kind of stuff, this is the way to solve it without giving anything. If if you look at it from the best case scenario to the worst case scenario, the worst case scenario for FSG is equity getting being given, the 51% rule coming into place, where the equity goes down, that ultimately their long-term vision, which is the long-term plan of when they sell the football club, getting their actual big return, the best case scenario for them is by giving a seat at the table to fans, which they can, they can immediately listen to and they can avoid, they can ignore. They can listen to and then give a little bit of which shows to fans that we are giving the fans what they want, which realistically they're not. That's what they're doing. They got ahead of it. Has any other football club come up with any type of solution? No, no. No Man United fucking you know, club or owner or anything like that has come up with any solution. Tottenham, no. Arsenal, no. No one has come up with any solutions. Chelsea and City can ignore them because the fans are pretty much happy with their owners because they've invested and all that kind of stuff. It's our owners that have come up with this. They're fucking every fan up the ass right now. They're trying to they're trying to rob you. It's a daylight robbery. They're getting away bloody murder. I'm dead against it. I don't give a shit what anyone says. I'm dead against this. Completely dead against it. And you might not see it right now, but guess what? In a year's time, in two years' time, in three years' time, when things haven't changed and FSC are just running over the football club like they've done since day one, he will be like, guess what? He was right. And it's not about being right. I'm just dead against it completely because I know they're ripping every fan off. I know that they're getting their way of solving this problem is by giving a little. That's all they're doing. That's all they're doing. If a C as the table is is the best case scenario, I mean, the, giving a C at the table is the best case scenario for them, and that's all they've done. They've literally just, oh my God, I can't, I really can't believe this. I truly cannot believe it. Right, let me get back to Kamal Adin because I've read off a lot of different uh, avenues. Which I should have done LFC debate, uh, LFC news for this as well. So first report, which is by Football Insider twenty uh, two four seven, it says sources Man United favorites to sign Solomon after a bid with eighth of June critical to deal uh, being done. So Man United are favorites to sign FC Northland striker uh, Kamal Dean Solomon after talks uh, this week. Football Insider has been told the side revealed on Monday that a United delegate has jetted out to Denmark for. Uh, talks over a potential transfer for the Ghana International with uh, Chairman Tom Ver uh, Vernon. Uh, Vernon. Uh, United source told Football Insider that the club had made it clear they are willing to outbid rivals Ajax for the versatile forward and that has put them in poor position to seal the deal. The Dutch Giants have submitted a package worth £12 million in order uh, in total for Sulman, but the English Giants are willing to meet the £50 million asking price. There is still plenty of hurdles to overcome, including red tape. Under the new post-Brexit transfer rule, Solomano does not have enough points to gain a work permit. However, that will uh, change for the t if uh, the teenager makes one more com uh, competitive appearance for the for Ghana or in uh, the Danish league climbs one place in the UEFA coefficients. Uh, Ghana are in action on 8th June when they play against uh, Morocco and as part of the preparations for the African qualifiers for next year's World Cup. Should Solomana play in the match, he is highly possible given his excellent recent form. Then a major stumbling block to United uh, signing the youngster will be removed. United have made the capture of the teenage star a top priority after assessing him extensively this season. Solomana, who joined uh, Northland in February of last year has scored 10 goals and supplied 7 assists in 28 appearances for the Danish outfit this term. Ajax are United's closest competition for a competitor, excuse me, for Solomana and their director of football, Marco Obas, was in uh, the front row last week to watch him in action. The 20-time English champions are, the, are only too aware 
how the how the recently crowned Dutch Eredivisie champions uh, beat them to the signing of another German youngster, Mohamed uh, Kudos, last year. So that's very very interesting. Next report, which is by Football Three Six Five, Man United willing to upgrade Ajax for fifty million uh, winger at the tr after transfer talks. Man United are keen to wrap up a deal for FC Norwich like winger Kamala Dean uh, Sulaimana this week. Uh, with the Premier League club emerging as favourites according to reports, Nozline reached the playoffs this season in the Danish uh, Superliga with the Solomana's 10 goals and 6 assists helping them along the way. The form has drawn interest from a, new, uh, from a number of clubs around Europe. The local Man United I saw rumour to be keen on the Ghanaian. And now Football Insider have Man United as a favourite to sign the Ghana International after... Uh, talks took place this week. The, the report adds that United delegate, delegation had uh, jetted out to Denmark for talks on uh, Monday and that the club chiefs made it clear that they are willing to outbid uh, main rivals Ajax for the versatile forward and that puts them in poor position to seal a deal. United are willing to meet the £50 million asking price, uh, which is more attractive to uh, Northside than the £12 million package submitted by Dutch side uh, Ajax. I believe we should just slide in there 18 Rise into 25, get the deal done, but we ain't going to rise to 25. We're not going to give money away for free. Uh, Sulemani needs to make one more competitive appearance for Ghana, who play Mor uh, Morocco on 8 June to gain enough points to get a world permit in the UK. In that case, Football Insider continued uh, that a major stumbling block to United signing the youngster will be removed with the Premier League club considering him a top priority. Ajax will uh, be, and if you think about it, if he's a high priority for Manchester United, then Jaden Sancho might not be a high priority because of finances, because of the money, because it will cost. Or all the reports that you see, then it starts to become very interesting. Is he high priority? Is it because he might be seen as the long-term replacement for a Martial, which I'll throw out there because I know eventually reports are going to write that? Or is it going to be the alternative to a Jaden Sancho from a price point of view because it'll be a hugely cheaper than Jadon Sancho. So then all the reports linking Jadon Sancho to Manchester United may not be true because Man United are maybe looking at alternatives to Jadon Sancho and the Usumani Dembele's and the list goes on kind of thing might not be that. And he might be that because if they can get this one, fans might be a little bit outraged because they won't sign Jadon Sancho. But if they get this player, then fans, if they do the research and then when they see him play, they'll be like, okay, you were right. Like, for example, the Cavani one, where fans were outraged. Why are you getting a 33-year-old? We don't want him. He's too old. He's not Jack Sancho. And they were all pissed off. And then now their opinions are changed, which shows you how much of a flip-flop and fans of Man United don't really know what the hell they're talking about. Uh, so Man United, I read that already. Uh, I read that already. Ajax uh, will fa be uh, facing competition, com uh, competitors for a signature door. Uh, with ADV's outfit director of uh, football, Marco Vumas, taking a trip to Denmark last week uh, to watch Solomon uh, in action. Nordis, uh, chairman, uh, chairman Jans uh, Larsen confirmed that the Red Devils' interest in Solomon. Uh, recently, he told Bill, it's been in uh, the papers that and they, United, are one of the clubs that are that are, that's uh, here sometimes so follows him closely. I have a feeling... Uh, that there are some who will be happy even if they have to pay a lot of money, but time will tell. There are many who uh, follow him and not everyone who like uh, to be here because of various restrictions. Of course, some of the heavyweights follow him closely. Again, another interesting one. Um, I don't want to read this report, by the way. Next report, which is by Sport Witnesses, Liverpool now in contention for extraordinary forward face Manchester United competition. Last week, reports came out from Denmark and Manchester United are one of the clubs monitoring uh, Kamal Adin Suleiman, FC Northland manager Fleming uh, Pedersen, uh, confirmed that aforementioned claims after um, the club chairman. Jan Larson hinted that the Red Devils are keen on signing the forward. Since then, it appears Liverpool have joined the Old Trafford club and Ajax are chasing the 19-year-old. So why was Michael Edwards economy to be so slow with his statistical data and analysis that he has that scours the globe? Why wouldn't we, why wouldn't we heavily look at this guy before? That's my question. Maybe his football manager broke or maybe... He just stopped watching YouTube videos, or maybe the uploaders weren't uploading quick enough, like Scout Nation and so forth. The Garden International scored in his uh, sides 2 1 victory over uh, uh, Raiders on Wednesday, and he assisted uh, Toti Chukawa one knees opening uh, opener for the uh, for the game. After the match, Pedersen told Denmark at uh, TV3 that the Reds are now in contention to sign the talented star. BT. 
However, we laid the comments made by Norse Lions manager and he confirmed that the Merseyside club, along with United and Montreal, the teenager, Manchester United, Liverpool and others were... Uh, who are on uh, the pitch also uh, well on the pitch well i also know kamal so well that he is uh, pressured he well, that he that when he is pressured he automatically takes the next step as well Pedersen says and with the personality and the mentality he has i will never say that it will be too big a leap because he is extraordinary. I exploit director Marco Vermaz was accompanied by his chief executive, uh, like clubs, uh, chief scout, excuse me, to their trip to Denmark uh, to watch Solomana in action. The player is aware of the ADV's uh, side's interest in Pedersen, and uh, Pedersen believes the move to Amsterdam, just like his uh, former teammate Mohamed uh, Kudos, that's interesting, I read that before, would be the step for his career rather than. Then one to Liverpool or Manchester United. Only look where Liverpool football club signing with Sadio Mane, I believe, would go because it's like for like. It's very similar. Players mainly left and side from three. He's right footed as well. So, Sadio Mane's right forward makes a little bit of sense. You could well imagine that if it was uh, Kamal Dean last month, I cannot stand here to say that I accept uh, expect him to be here next season because there is so much hype around him. That's completely understandable and I myself helped uh, hype him last spring when he made his debut, but I have uh, to see what happens. Sulemana has 10 goals and 86 in 29 matches in all competitions this season. So we are in the race for him. Whether we land his actual signature, only time will tell. Only time will tell. Remember to click on the like button below, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Oh, here you go, by the way, just a, a report that's come in. A, uh, nine minutes ago on the local Echo timeline, it says Milan step up interest in assigning Liverpool target. AC Milan reportedly stepped up their interest in uh, Liverpool linked to Rodrigo de Paul. The Reds have been regularly linked with the move forward in as a midfielder, with Milan also said to be uh, in the running, according to Italian journalist uh, Aula Gazzetta della Sport, which is the number one donkey in Italian journalism. <laughs> via inside football Milan are preparing to offer one of the talented youngsters as part exchange offer for De Paul the Serie A club are said to be willing to offer winger Jens Petter Hogg as part of an offer to let uh, Udinese move to uh, Milan yeah best not to fix it on the fund representation topic yeah, I'm over it now. I mean, I know. Pinky says, I think Pierce said that FSG will cover the... Yeah, they will cover the... They, they haven't agreed to that yet. But in, based on what I read, it was something that had been suggested by F, by Spirit Shankly. So if that is true, what James Pierce is saying, that FSG have agreed to cover the cost like Arsenal uh, owner had. And I think the United owners had come out and said that any fines that UEFA sanction on the football club, that the owners will cover the cost. So if that is something that's been agreed upon, that's fair enough. That's something that I'm not aware of because this is with, with the news coming out. It's the first time I'd actually seen it. So in my personal opinion, in my personal opinion, I'm still dead against this whole supporters trust having a seat at the table. It's their way of... It's their way of... Uh, what they've done is they've... They found a way around the system. They found a loophole. That's what they've done. They found a loophole. And fans are like, yeah, sure, we will agree to this because we get a seat at the table. We'll get anything. Just so they can get their head in through the door, just so they can get the attention. A part of the sports trust of Liverpool Football Club, a club that you know that, that you are always desperate to be a part of, right? If they offered you a job to be a fucking bin man, you'd take it because you're a part of the club close to it. Like if people, of course, have different roles and jobs at the club because of various different reasons. But my point being is that that's what it appears like to me. And I'm not being disrespectful. I'm just giving my honest opinion. And that's what it ultimately is. So Black Panther says, who is he? He plays for Northland. He's a winger. He's uh, on the same level, in my personal opinion, skill-wise, as Jaden Sancho. So Man United are linked with him. We're linked with him. Ajax made a report bid of £12 million. Man United increased that to £15 million. So he's a player that I'm very, very keen on. Um, only if Sadio Mane decides that he wants to leave as his replacement. The most bad club, but I'm not going to think of really what's uh, round nose. Well, there's round nose, there's brown nose. <laughs> there's brown nose, which I don't know if I said round nose, but that's what brown nose is. Brown nose, you all know what it is when someone sticks their nose up someone's ass, right? Right far up it, they're kissing their ass. So 
Anyway, people, um, I'm kind of a bit annoyed. Thanks for that football as well, uh, by dropping that. I know you meant well, but thanks for dropping it because it kind of pissed me off a little bit. <laughs> I can't believe it. I literally cannot believe it. I literally cannot believe it. Uh, but, yeah. Anyway, we're going to wrap up the show. I'll be back tomorrow. I've got shows all set up, uh, ready for tomorrow as well with the... Um, Gangster show, 1 o'clock, Fantasy Premier League show at 5 o'clock, and then possibly a match build-up show at uh, 5 o'clock as well. We've got one game remaining, Crystal Palace, on Sunday as well. So that wraps up LFC Transfer Talk. Click on the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and thanks very much for watching.